Thanks. I thought for a second I was going to have to follow the comedian. <clears throat> um, so it's, um, it, it's funny, the thought that goes through your mind when you find yourself laid out in full pike position, uh, a full story in the air with nothing below you but uh, concrete driveway. Um, it started with a question, a simple question that uh, I would expect any 14-year-old hood rat from Delaware County to answer pretty much the same way I would. Uh, where are we going to drink tonight? <clears throat> uh, so uh, Tom and I, my best friend, we actually had an answer. See, we knew where uh, the girls were having a sleepover. So we, we definitely had a destination in mind. So we did a quick check of uh, the provisions we needed. Cigarettes, check. Uh, two six-packs, one for each of us, check. Yeah, we're good. So um, we start making our way. Now, <clears throat> you can't make the one-mile trek from North 2nd Street in Darby to uh, Main Street and McDade Boulevard in downtown Darby without actually crossing over some, you know, wa walking some portion of Main Street, um, which is good because back then um, there weren't very many drug dealers on Main Street. Um, <clears throat> however, for two minors carrying beer at 3 a.m., um, it was bad for the same reason that it was bad for the drug dealers, you know, the cops. Uh, Darby had several marked police cars and just a couple unmarked police cars, which were hard to spot in the daytime. But this was pitch dark, and we were going by sound. Now, the Chevy Caprice, you know, favorite cop car uh, for the Darby police force, had V8 engines. You know, there was no surprise to the noise that they made. So uh, being, you know, no stranger to curfew violations myself, I knew the sound of a marked police cruiser. The, <clears throat> what the youth of Darby knew that the police apparently did not was that the unmarked police cars also, in order to catch the bad guys, had pretty strong engines. So they sounded pretty much the same. Um, so we were, we were, we were set. Um, it started out, um, we started out at a good clip going through, you know, the back streets with plenty of yards, plenty of places to hide, you know, lots of, lots of ways to run. So we weren't really too concerned about the noise we were making. We were laughing it up and having a good time. Um, <clears throat> as we zigzagged closer to Main Street, um, we reached uh, Darby Terrace, which is the last street to parallel Main Street before we had to start walking. And uh, it was time to button it up. You know, Darby Terrace, like a lot of the streets in Darby, were row homes. Uh, and this one was just the right amount of skinny, where it was a one-way street with parking only on one side. Um, as we neared the end of the street, towards the inter intersection of 5th Street, um, you know, we slowed down, we stopped talking so much, and we tried to listen. Um, and right as we got to the end, <clears throat> I handed Tom my six-pack. I said, hold this. And I peeked my head around the last building. Around this time, um, I spent a lot of my Saturday nights that I didn't sneak out, um, actually inside on the phone with a radio DJ for Eagle 106. I don't know if anyone remembers that station, but for some reason, um, I, yeah, I, I would stay up late Saturday nights and I would call this DJ that did the 12 to 2 a.m. stint on the radio. I don't remember his name, I don't remember what we talked about. Um, how it came about that I was talking to this guy and having these long conversations interrupted by him, you know, speaking on the radio, uh, where he would sometimes record me, you know, screaming the station identification really excitedly. Uh, actually, that's a lie. I wasn't allowed on the phone uh, in the middle of the night, so I kind of had to whisper it like I was watch watching a golf match, you know? Eagle 106. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I made any airtime. Um, but the story of how I became... Um, to sp how I came to spend my Saturday nights talking to this DJ, uh, you know, I'm sure is terrific. I just can't remember it. But I, do, I did learn a lot of things about the uh, overnight DJ, Danny Bonaducci, and uh, what went on in that studio in the middle of the night. Uh, but that's for a different story night, I suppose. So um, I had a hard time getting Tom to believe me about this DJ, because every time I was over Tom's house, when I called, he wouldn't answer. So I really think he thought I was making the whole thing up, which is probably why as I peeked around the corner and I turned around and I whispered in my golf whisper, cop, uh, he just kept right walking. And uh, two six packs, one in each hand, right in the middle of the street, full headlights. All right, so I'm told that Tom dropped both six packs and took off running 
through the parking lot of the check cashing place around that under the awning of the Queen of Pizza, hooked over to the fence into the churchyard and then around back down Fifth Street towards Darby Terrace. I was told that because I was hiding behind one of the parked cars um, and listening for clues as the cops chased my friend. Um, uh, just a few minutes of that and I started a light jog back down Darby Terrace, which was one way, the opposite way I, uh, I was running. And I'm crouched low and I'm trying to, I got to get somewhere out of this area because I don't know if Tom's arrested and going to tell them where I was or what, but I had to scoot. So I'm, uh, I'm zipping along at a light speed when I hear a sound behind me. Now, <clears throat> Tom had made his way back towards Darby Terrace with the cops pacing him the whole way and figured, you know what, it's a one-way street. If I run down it the wrong way, the cops are in a car. They can't follow me. Uh, he wasn't far down the street before he realized the error of his ways, and he just reversed directions because it was a skinny street. So the sound I heard behind me that gave me the hitch to my giddy-up was the cops slamming on the brakes and tires screeching. Well, in my mind's eye, that was the cops rounding the corner at top speed going up on two wheels as they were narrowing in on my location. So I zipped it up a little bit, and I headed right for the corner house, uh, the opposite corner house uh, that th there was a low hedge probably just high enough to hide me if I laid down flat and I was in a hurry because they were about on to me so I figure as I leap I'm going to go sideways and I'm going to land all cool like on my stomach and be hiding behind this hedge they're going to go right by me and they're not going to know what's going on <laughs> it was as I cleared the hedge and saw the hidden basement driveway rushing up to give me my first broken ankle that I said to myself I should have kept that six pack. 